over at the orchard a very strong spot he's looking that he wants to crash pad in you could already see the stair placement but he's just trying to track and i like what the player has done down below he almost gets the stair and traps him in that box to be able to make the edits but he's staying in a contained space where you can't actually throw that stair crash pad making it difficult for uri to actually break into this box tried to crash pad right there to recover but didn't actually land in expects his opponents one and two big charge pumps straight to dadoi's face and easy for yuri to pick that one out i don't think he expects here comes janice he misses the shot just barely tags and now all of a sudden it's a different story crash pad out and he does get him through the air he's flying and so is kenswood back to the lobby janice sets up a beautiful trap is doing right here and there's a quick shot. Didn't actually land it down, though. The trap was not set like we saw with Curry, but it's fine. He still gets it down <laughs> on a Hellfire <laughs> and another L dance. These guys are keeping it spicy. And we've seen these early fights be so important in the heats. And that's and, and then moving to the grand finals. Things change a little bit now. And sorry, though, he's going to go over top. Misses the shot, gets chucked down a little bit, but they're starting to run out of materials. He falls, and Omega rises. As a champion of that fight, very important for him because it's only two points now. He's gotten himself a little bit more space, but is it actually going to matter? And fights are so important. Why is that? They give you momentum overall to push through into the rest of the game. Reason gets in that box. If you don't have people contesting you, you can find people on rotation. Nice pickup from him. His loot is looking stellar. He's got Chuck Splashes, a Pepper 2 that speeds you right up, makes you move faster than everyone else. Now we're looking back earlier in the game. It's Moki with a sniper rifle, and I'm guessing that this is the demise of the other player who's looking to get a snipe of his own, but you can't stay still for too long because Moki sitting in the swamps is lurking in the shadows with a sniper of her own. There's an Elim, and that's starting back up what she missed out on the last game. But contrasting the positions up on the mountain, down here in the lake, there's really not much to shoot at. Thankfully, though, there's a couple of Marauder packs that might actually make it so that these players on the other side who are getting completely pushed by these Marauders have some openings. And there it is, an opening onto ADN through the window. Nate capitalizes. The crash pad play set up from PCH to go in the box and yes, it's an easy find. One tag shot with the reduced damage that comes with this season and it still makes it work. PCH must have had information to make that play. That's why he had that confidence. On this left side of the zone. He's still looking for the next shot here. It's close and there it is. Nice onto Mac ball. An instant reaction needed for that shot and it was perfect by swaps. That's not always gonna hold. If it doesn't hold, this is what can happen. Shots taken, easy for Carmi. And now he has six points, rising closer to that top 10. Loot to boot as well. He wasn't looking that good before, but now the options of Chuck Splashes and Floppers will make his game really nice. As we tuned in with Noah, he's on the south side trying to rotate through dirty docks where he might encounter the game one winner, SD Noah though. Doesn't encounter him, he encounters Agony, and it's a quick Elim for him, for him that he can use, but they're gonna end up on low ground, which might not have been the best opportunity or play. Oh wow, PCH with another elimination. He's getting closer to first place so far for this heat. 15 total points, closer now to third or second place. Two eliminations already, he's looking for his third, just baiting out this loot, setting up another trap. He's been so good at that today, and it's just game number two, an RPG in his face. A good block. He's running out of match though. He needs to find something out of these eliminations rather than just the points. He needs to get in there, get those materials, and find a better way to play this game. I'm concerned. Fit zone has been revealed. I'm wondering where it is. South, yes, on top of Mongrel, on top of Noah Riley, on top of so many players that we just looked at in the wide shots. Mongrel found an Elim, actually, I believe, from zone or fall damage. Pot no, it's Surge. I believe that what just happened is Surge went active. Mongrel had done damage, and this player went down immediately as it got activated. Uh, Storm Surge, if you're not dealing that damage, it will start to smite you. 25 damage a tick every five seconds. So minis can save you and keep you alive for a little bit, but you've seen all these players and their loadouts. They've invested so much to make these rotations. It's very tough to still have shields. Vortex though, has been playing perfect so far. 500 damage almost above Surge, two eliminations. His mats are looking perfect. And look at that loot, six peppers lasting one minute each. He could start popping them now and he would have super speed till the end of this game. 
so much time, but often people don't actually prefer the peppers. Although it looked like at the beginning of the season it might be a different story. We'll open up again and get a couple more tags. That player base is up near him. There's another guy. Oh, he knows. Yes, that is not a safe box. Oh, Belvede is now down. Vortex. This time he's the aggressor. This time he sees the opportunity and does not have to defend Belvede. Unfortunately, trying to go on that player he thought was weak through the cone. That's a perfect pickup from Vortex from up high. Another man near the top 10 is Wolfies. He's used to being up high, used to being first, especially after the first few games. If there's someone who can really give us a show on this end game, it has to be him. I'm curious too, where Janice is. These guys are all so close after that first game. And it's again, a zone that favors the players who came first and second in the last game. Wolfie's trying to strike again, bring his power to bear. He made it towards that end game, but it was Esty who took him out. Out of contention for the top spots, 14th. He will drop into another box and take out another one in perfect time because now mats are back, upgrades are bound and also crash pads to take. And even some floppers too. So Wolfie's has all the tools at this stage of the game. He's looking so adaptive, basically falling like water into boxes, playing this end game. But now it's time to wave. It's time to move straight over to the end game. Six zone is moving. Height has to stay dynamic. Everyone in mid ground has to be careful. Beams taken on people who are moving around. Scouts is all the way up ahead. Richard Slack is up near the top spot, looking to see what he sees next. And Janice is here too, stuck in the middle of the freight between so many players. A crash pad will set him free towards his next spot. But how many times can he do that before it's too late? He's gotten in the zone. Other players who are near him, Mongro, Moki, they're in the end game again. But can they get past the big points? That 30th place. Ooh, a big tag from Janice is on Dietrich. Starting to heat up again. He got six eliminations last time. That crash pad does eventually work out. Thankfully, now he has some momentum to move forward. And there's zone pulling all the way towards the coast. Janice has got it. He flies and flies, but gets beamed at the same time. 80 HP now. He has to get back into it. Everyone else is catching up as he makes these rotations, though, without any eliminations. Wolfies has eliminations in the feed. We have surprise with a double back-to-back. -back. It's 25 people left alive with Lepnik all the way up top on the high ground. Moki, with a sliver of HP, can chain launch pad to launch pad if it's possible. Krajas is right ahead of everyone else as well. Top five looking for his next shot. Mongrel is the one also surviving in this end game. It is so stacked, so close. One shot, the next one. Carmi down. One person on Mongrel's box. He has to crash pad out. He has to stay safe. And Alex goes down to zone. And that's revenge on the player who took him out last game. Now he's moving forward. Mongrel 2.0, is he here to stay? Who's on height? It's Letwick, Janice, and Mongrel on the screen right now, but still so many people in this game. Wolfies, Blackie, they're all here. Reason two, this is gonna be a one for the ages. Janice and Bricolino all the way down to the low ground, but up top it's Letwick with so many other people right below him in the mid. Janice is by himself in a world of his own while Letwick is battling. Peppa Pig up on height. The shockwave launcher goes up, but it's not enough. Letwick almost taken out in the same box as Mongrel. He does get that shot off. Mongrel is there with the elimination. Now Janice is getting all quiet on low ground. The game is just happening for him around him. Everyone else is battling box to box. Wolfies is down. Jumps up. Mongrel there with another elimination. Peppa is still controlling height. Wolfies goes for it, but gets slapped out of the sky as he gets held down and Janice gets another elimination. But Margo's still tunneling forward. 14 builds remaining. He's challenging height. He's about to take it, but he's going to run out of materials to do this. Thankfully, these guys are not challenging too, and it's going back in the dirty docks. Yes! On to reason. Revenge for that day one performance. Now, three people going to fight back to back against low ground. Janice goes down, but Margo's Mongrel. starting to fight as well. He might get more. He might get more in the zone. He's pressuring. He can't get any space. No HP left down below. Margo is about to win this game with seven eliminations. All he has to do, it's racks. Wait to until he comes through, oh, even more pressure, more pressure coming in through the window, through the grates, through the cracks, and there is no space. He has to break now through big metal walls. It's old builds. It's just a little bit of a dream for Rax here. Mongrel is looking to wrap things up. The first shot, the shield was there to block it, but Mongrel's up top. Can he get that jump tack classic down for a seventh elimination and the win? He can. Mongrel, from the depths of the storm, from the boxes of his enemies, rises to the top with a victory royale. Bro, we are, but look, top spot is still being held by none other than Janice, who in that game placed fourth with five eliminations. So he's still here, keeping Mongrel at bay, but Esty, the first, the winner from the first game, is also keeping pace, the eliminations being the, the difference in the tiebreaker. Boy,